I've been using Evaporust for a while now. I came across the perfect item to test just how well this stuff really works. This adjustable wrench was included in a lot of tools I got at a yard sale. I think this poor thing actually spent some time underground. You could make the argument that it should have been left buried. The jaw and worm screw were seized solid. I gave the wrench a quick brushing to remove any loose dirt or rust. Not a whole lot came off with the wire brush. I also gave it a shot of brake cleaner to remove any oil. I submerged the brushed and degreased wrench in Evaporust. It is important to totally submerge the item. The Evaporust has very little odor when new. As you use it, it picks up a metallic smell, probably from all the iron it is absorbing. I covered the container to help minimize evaporation. This is probably not completely necessary, and I don't do it every time. Notice how dark the liquid became after soaking for about 24 hours. Evaporust removes the iron from the iron oxide, aka rust. It will not affect the iron in the steel. It is not an acid, and I have left parts soaking in Evaporust for weeks with no bad results. It looked like there was still some dirt embedded in the worm screw. I used a pick to remove the dirt so that the Evaporust could soak in better. I soaked the wrench in the same Evaporust for another 24 hours. It looked a little better, but the jaw and worm screw were still seized up. I decided to give the jaw a couple of whacks with a hammer to see if that would free it up. After several whacks, I was able to get the jaw to move with the worm screw. I decided to give the wrench one more 24 hour soaking. Notice how dark the Evaporust had become. I have found the Evaporust can be used over and over. When it stops removing rust after a 24 hour soak, it's time to throw it out. Since it is non-toxic and biodegradable, it can be poured down the drain. The jaw moved freely after the third soak. Here's the wrench after a brushing and a rinse with tap water. If I'm not going to work on the item right away, I like to soak it with WD-40 to disperse any remaining water and to prevent any new rust from forming. I degrease the wrench before using the wire wheel. I found the smaller wire wheel chucked in my hand drill was better at getting into the center section of the handle. I used my belt sander to get below the heavy pitting. I made up a little sanding block to help sand the craftsman letters flat to make them easier to read. I used my Dremel and my Scotch-Brite discs to blend out the sanding marks. I realize this is ridiculous, but I wound up flitzing the jaws. I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. I finished up with a couple of coats of paste wax. Let me take you back to what I started with. The wrench looked like it was pulled out of a mud grave. The jaw and worm screw were seized solid. Now she's far from perfect, but definitely a functional tool. 
the jaw and worm screw move very freely. The jaw has some play, but I've seen way worse. It'll be handy having a metric one of these. I'm sure there are viewers that are craftsman experts that can date this wrench based on the markings. Is the WF Western Forge? Evaporust is about $17 a gallon on Amazon. I find it is worth the money when I need to free a rusted mechanism or remove rust from areas I cannot reach by other means. You could make the argument that this Craftsman wrench wasn't worth the effort. I chose it to show how far gone a tool can be and still be restored to a functional and attractive condition. I would recommend keeping Evaporust in mind for when you spot that vintage tool at the flea market that everyone else has passed up because it looks too far gone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I found this item at Home Depot in the aisle with the pegboard hooks. It was about $7. It mounts to pegboard, solid walls, or in between exposed studs. It's about 24 and a half inches long and six inches deep. Here it is mounted on my pegboard. I tried to put the tools I use the least in the back. and the stuff I'm always reaching for in the front. I'm still experimenting with what tools to put where, but it definitely frees up room on my pegboard wall.